Mm. So, what's up, everybody? I'm out here from point of view. And um, as you see, we got a new background, and we're not alone. So, I'm here with Wrestling Cup Classic, and we're here to have a little interview on this on this episode of uh, Point of View. So, introduce yourself. Well, thank you very much for the... Um... For the intro there thank you very much for inviting me as a as a guest to your show i am very honored to be a part of this experience so thank you very much you're welcome and um and like i have some questions and like and like these ain't well personal questions these are just questions that that just that i just popped up in my head because to be honest wasn't really that prepared <laughs> and okay. like and like, yeah, so you don't have to be formal. Yeah, so like um you don't have to be formal, you know, just 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 be yourself and Okay. Yeah. So All right. So my so my first question is basically when did your favorite even start it? Oh when when did it all start it, huh? Yep. Well well Mal, thank you um for the question and thank you for the opportunity once again. Um, all of this started about, I would say, when did uh, Fire Pro come out for the PlayStation 4? It came out in 2017, right? I think it came out, it came out, yeah, well, hold up, because the initial release was July 11, 2017, so I think it came out, I found it, August 28, 2018. Oh, 2018. Yeah, so we've been existing then for 2018. 2017, that's when it came out for Steam. Yep. And that's when I first uh, was put on to Fire Pro by my nephew. He he knew I was a huge fan of Fire Pro and uh, the whole entire series from Return to D to G to um, Six Man Scramble. So he knew I, I loved Fire Pro and um, I had, you know, just always had a thing for it. So he put me on to it on the... In 2017, he sent me a YouTube video. I was living in Tampa, Florida at the time. And um, he sends me a YouTube video. He's like, hey, look, Fire Pro for the next generation on uh, PC. You know, he's on PC only. And I was like, oh, that's super cool. Because at the time, um, when I was living in Tampa, I didn't have uh, the resources to get a gaming computer. I just invested um, all my money and time and energy to moving to Tampa, making this big relocation. Um, I bought a condo down there. So, it, you know, all my money was tied up to other things. So when he sent me that for 2017, I saw it. And I saw um, this is when the, when the mod pack was first released. You got me? I think it was like version one. This is when they were working with other mods like Asus mod and uh, I think Bozo's. I think that's when Bozo's move sets. I think that's the guy's name. Um, so, and they had like the Titan Trons in the first mod pack that you can customize so that you could put the video of the actual wrestlers. I don't know if you remember that, but you can put the, um, the videos in the Titan Trons in the bottom when they come out from big garden. Yeah. And I thought that was super cool. You know, like seeing that, I thought that was super dope. I was like, oh my God. Um, so I really wanted to get it for PC. I tried to save up my money. It didn't work out. And then, um, I found out that it was coming for the PS4 and I had a PS4. So I was like, oh, that's perfect. So I'll wait for the PS4 and I can get the whole camera mods and all that other fun stuff or whatever, uh, only to be disappointed that the camera didn't move in the PlayStation version. <laughs> um, you know, I, get, I got myself so excited. I'm like, I'm so hype. You know, I'm like mad hype. I'm like, yes, um, I'm going to finally get Fire Pro. And it looks so awesome because of the, the the dynamic cuts that they use, you know, like the camera mods. I'm like, oh man, this looks super dope, right? Um, right. and then I get it, and then I'm super disappointed because it doesn't do that, you know, it doesn't do the camera cuts, it doesn't um do the the customizable entrance and all this other stuff. So then I took a negative because I was feeling down, and I took a negative and turned it into a positive, and then I started uh um, bullshitting, just downloading random wrestlers. Um, you know how you you know how that goes. Them out. Um, everybody, um, that gets the game, the first thing you do is go to the to the Steam store, the PlayStation store, and you right. download all of these characters. You know, 
all these wacky characters. Oh, just wait until yeah, we get you, to, just wait until we talk about Chikara. Then I have yeah. something to say about that game. <laughs> Yo, listen, man. So it's like you, you download all these wrestlers, you get so hyped, you get so excited. Um, and then you just play random matches. Like I, I put all the real belts, like the new Japan belts on the line, and I put the thing, but these were all offline. And then one day, um, me and my friend, who was the original commentator for Wrestler Cup Classic P Money, um, we're in my apartment, we're getting stoned, and um, <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> We're getting stoned and we put Fire Pro Wrestling uh, uh, Returns for the PlayStation 2 on the PS3 because you could buy it on the PS3. So I bought it. I put it on the PS3 um, and I put Andre the Giant, like the fake Andre the Giant, like Romanov, Kovinov, whatever his like fictional name is in return. But you know it's Andre the Giant, but he, he just has a fictional name. Um, so we put that Andre the Giant in, a, in an octagon cage. And um, we put him up against like 15 people and he will beat the shit out of 15 fictional people. But, you know, these. Yeah. Right. Oh, and no. um, yeah. So my dude, he he always wore P money, always wore Zara sweaters. Right. He wore Zara sweaters. That was his thing. So I made the championship for return just because we were just um, getting stoned and just bullshitting. Um, I named about the Zara belt. So then as we were sitting here, more people come to my house because my house is like a, a nest of people to come and whatnot. Like the most weirdest and strangest motherfuckers have sat in my couch. You get me? Like <laughs> you see how Jerry Seinfeld has comedians with cars. <laughs> I should have cup classic couch because the, 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 the amount of guests that come here with different ideas. Don't get me wrong. Like I've met a lot of fun celebrities here sitting down on my couch that you wouldn't believe. You're like, oh, my God. You know, and um, and I was so oblivious by them, but I get a lot of characters that come to the house. So then the people that was here saw the guy win 15 matches, like 15 and 0, and we're giving just bullshit commentary um, during during the match. So then I get the idea like, oh, this might be fun. He's enjoying it. Um, let's start checking out Twitch, for instance. And then I made a Twitch account. And just started doing random matches on Twitch. Um, we, we started first playing FIFA on Twitch for a little bit. That transitioned to Fire Pro, which was fun. It transitioned right into Fire Pro. And then we started running our first shows under the moniker NWA, you know, because it was a dead promotion. Billy Corrigan True. didn't buy it. You get me? So yeah. it was dead. Nobody was using it. I figured to myself, why not? Um, and, and I ran with NWA as the moniker at first. I will call it NWA um, Strike Force. I will call it NWA um, Trap Down. I will call it NWA whatever the case may be and use real wrestlers, but give them, you know, like stories and whatnot. Because, you know, it, it was just the thing to do when you have all of these characters. You didn't know what to do for the first time, you know? So it was just like, it was an experimental uh journey because we went from real wrestlers um showcasing what the real fake thing can't do um and we were better than that so it just made a lot of sense to continue rolling with that um we have a lot of old old stuff on our twitch page um that you can watch and be like oh shit and see the progression from wrestling cup classic from being using real wrestlers to where we're currently at right now using original edits and giving content creators time to shine. But how it all started, it just started out for fun. And it's still this for fun, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's just for fun, you know, and, and I absolutely love it. And I'm glad that it worked out that way because it, that that's an interesting story on, on wrestling cup. Class. You said that like you transition, right? And like, my, and like, I'm curious to know from when you was using like real wrestlers, and then you transition to calls. Like, what made you do that? Like, yeah. Well, what made me do it? Um, to keep it real, I was watching other content creators um play with um CAWs, 
And I thought that was really cool. Like, I will watch um, HTW, for instance, um, John Dubai's promotion, uh, figure four leg lock. That's another good promotion that was out there. Spuchula, another good one. Um, and it and, and Carl Zilla has one as well because he has like a fictional league. And that I thought that was really cool. And I was like, oh, that's super fun. They're using original characters. And, you know, it makes it much more exciting because once you put original edits like um, like Stone Cold and Goldberg and Brock Lesnar, you know, those matches gets boring after a while because in real life, we know what the outcome can be. And then playing it in Fire Pro, you know, it's cool to have an outcome to it, but we know what Stone Cold in real life would do to a guy like... uh. Brock Lesnar, you got me? Or what Brock Lesnar would do to a guy like Austin, what Goldberg can do to a guy like Austin. You know, these are matches that we all wanted, that we know can happen in the future. And then seeing that play out after a certain time on Fire Pro, that gets kind of repetitive. So then I wanted to change the focus from using original guys um, that everyone knows and give creators more of a spotlight because the game is a very vanilla game you know and it's all a, it, it's run on original characters and what originality means you know and that's beautiful because it's like art sometimes art gets lost in the shuffle because there's so many in the market right and then when you go back and look at it and you go back you can find the diamonds in the rough because you see the market is so saturated and now it gives you time to really break down what you think is art in your eyes. You get me? And then other people, if it's displayed correctly, you know, will have the same eye as you will be like, you know what? I like this original character that I've never seen before. And now I can hear his story because his creator took time to create him give him life, give him moves, give him a logic, give him um, a story and whatnot. And, you know, there's, like I said, there's so many edits and you'll get lost in the shuffle. So I wanted to give creators the platform to shine, you know, and, and be a part of that platform of a community that is small, but powerful. Because like I said, you take your time to create your fighter and your move sets and what they are and you I, you sit in your house and you're like my fighter is the best you know we all create fighters you know like you have a fighter right all right and i'm sure in your universe your fighter is the man right you can say that right so you know in your heart your fighter is the man against your own personal competition but now when you put him in the world with other edits right that's unpredictable because it's mathematics because it's this that's how the logic system works and now it's your mathematical logical skills versus someone else's mathematical logical skills in an unpredictable contest you know that no one's controlling you're not controlling him i'm not controlling him it breaks down to mathematics and that's what this platform does is to showcase how good you know the game. You got me? If you are truly the man, like as and as all creators, you know, we all make fighters. This guy's the man. This girl's the man. They're the man. This group is the men. These group are the people, would be the better word. Um, you know, and that's in your own world. Now, if you add them to another world, can they be as dominant as you think? Or will they get, you know, buried would be the better word in other competition because they haven't stand out. And then the good thing about that is that as a creator, it gives you more of a passion to continue creating your character, updating your character, giving them better moves, giving them better logic, giving them better this, because it's pushing you to your limit, you know? So yeah, you're the man in your own world, but step out of your world enter a different world and can your character still keep that intensity at that high level with better competition and wrestling cup classic 
gives you that platform because of the unpredictability. You know, the computer god that be, the computer god, ladies and gentlemen, is the actual Fire Pro wrestling game. The computer god determines everything. You know, you're not controlling him. Like I said, it's all unpredictable. It is unpredictable because, like, when it comes down to Fire Pro, Fire Pro, unless you're using a certain mod, then the matches are randomly generated winners. So it, so it's like, it's basically like, if you want to play a slot machine, it's randomly generated, you might win. Same with Fire Pro. It's randomly generated that your favorite wrestler or your favorite call or your main call might win the match. So, yeah. like... It's interesting. It's it's totally interesting because it, like it just breaks down to the science, which is mathematics at the end of the day, you know? Um and that's the name of the game, is unpredictability. I'm not gonna take away from other leagues that are out there that are player versus player, because player versus player leagues is fun. It's great for like casual entertainment and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, when you see a match that's player versus player, it gets boring after a while because the players don't want to pin each other because they want to do more big moves. And you can feel that is scripted. And that takes away from the unpredictability factor because in Fire Pro, it's unpredictable. You know, when it's CPU versus CPU, you don't know if that guy is going to make a cover after a big move. You don't know if he's going to go for a submission after a weak move, you don't know because you're not controlling him, you know? And that's the nice thing about simulation leagues is that you just leave it up to the, <laughs> the computer God and the computer God does whatever it wants to do. And you, you can't control it. The only thing you can control is pushing start, pushing exit, exiting the game, starting the game putting the fighters in that's the most you control and the rest is all about to how well you understand the game yeah and like not knocking that player versus player fights but they just you just be like yeah this happened but why didn't you go for the pin like especially in player versus player 2k fits and there were and, and you just yelling at the TV say go for the pen you fucking moron you did your finisher or be like how did it kick out of this it's like like you just gonna yell at the TV just because like not only some dumb mistakes but it just be like bruh like yeah it just could have won <laughs> yeah it just feels controlled player versus player leagues feel control like for example. Um, a league that I do matches for and I call matches for called um Fire Pro Online, for instance. I'm I'm the like the lead commentator. Me and my other commentator from Wrestling Club Classic, Gun Hill Bane, we do the commentary for Fire Pro Online, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. And we just did their October pay per view thing, which was called uh Fight or Fright, Fright or Fight. Um. And it was long, I would say. You got me? Like, oh my God. it was very long for production because it started out, you know, first off, they took a page from Wrestling Club Classic by shooting and starting with the city intro. Where did he get that from? Wrestling Club Classic, duh. Because um, we, I was doing that first. Um, and then watching the match, because we recorded it right after we did the Super Juniors tournament, you know? So I don't know if you watched any of the Super Juniors tournament, but the Super Juniors tournament is exciting. That's the cruiserweights. You get me? It's the cruiserweights of original CAWs in Fire Pro. So these are all the juniors that people have created because they love cruiserweights. And now this is the stage for those characters to shine. Throw yourself off the middle rope. Throw yourself off through the apron. Throw yourself off from the top rope. Do the... Mexican spin DDT, do the Canadian destroyer from the top. You got me? It's like exciting shit. It's like you watched the Cruiserweight Classic when WWE put it on, right? Oh, I love the Cruiserweight Classic. Why did you love it? Because it showcased not only just the, the smaller guys, but they're just exciting. You get me? So 
And that's the same excitement we bring with the Super Juniors tournament. We have 32 countries being represented. You got me? And all of those tournament fights were exciting because they all brought different styles. You get me? And it really showcased the AI of those creators. It really showcased that, you know? And watching Fire Pro Online's video, which is which was cool, um, but watching their video, it dragged. You get me? There was moments in matches where you're like, yo, just pin them. It's over. You get me? But because they want to be, you know, original, quote unquote, then, oh, no, I'm not going to pin you here. I'm going to do a taunt and then pick you up and then throw you to the outside and do more damage. And you're like, dude. You get me like the edits already beat up. The edits already done. Just pin them. You get me? It's, Just pin them. Like but this, my bad. But like this reminds me of one of my good friends, Cedric. Like how he made his edits for his um show. Basically, that's the CR CR one seven seven. Yeah, like 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 if you watch his shows, you see that every big move uh, there's always a pin. Versus other shows, they do big moves, pick them up, another big move, taunt, pick them up, do their finisher, pick them up after the finisher. You'd be like, what? Yep. Yep. <laughs> versus and that happens show. a lot. Yeah. Player versus player. And like, I'm over here on, on YouTube, and there's like, and like, I see why the show is one hour long. I thought it's going to be like seven matches. There's only four. <laughs> Yeah, and you know why they're an hour or something long? It's because of that. It's that whole formula. You know what I mean? When you're playing player versus player, I don't want to put on a spectacle. I want to play my character and beat you. You get me? That's why I'm controlling my character to beat you, not to be a showman and let me try to do what AEW does and try to do what WWE does and whatnot. No, because for that, just simulate the shit. You get me? For that, just simulate the fucking matches because it makes more sense. If you're going to play the game, play the game. Beat your opponent, right? That's the whole point. I'm playing FIFA with you, right? Let's say, for example, Mal, me and you play FIFA together, right? All right. Um, we're playing FIFA, there's not a third, and whatnot. What's the whole point of playing a sports game? To win, is it? Right. So now, in the middle of our game, I'm there passing the ball, taunting, doing tricks, doing this, doing that. You, as the other player, how are you going to feel? You got me? Like, what the hell am I wasting my time for? I'd rather play the computer instead of, you know, after, after before I shoot, I got to do a trick and then do another trick, and then do another trick, and then finally shoot the ball, like, what are you doing? You got me? Like, your job is to be beat your opponent, player versus player, you know? Not to make it look like a simulated match, and when uh, if you're going to do that, just you just might as well simulate it. You get me? All right. Like, just to keep it real. And, like, when it comes down to stuff like that, it's just... You just want like you got to show that you want to win like not saying that your style is wrong you're just doing it differently but like at the same time it's like you got to show that you really want to win like if, if you really want to win you got to literally try to win you can't of just course. bullshit like oh, like i get that like oh i did my finisher pinned and he somehow he kicks out that's understandable because he kicks out of course, that's natural. You got me. That if your character has enough stamina left in the game, right? Because if, if we put on the mods to put the stamina health bar, you get to see that. If your character yeah. has enough stamina for that, cool. He kicks out. That's natural. But if I'm pinning you and then I'm breaking up a pin because I don't want it to end because I needed to look more dramatic and I want to make it look like a real thing for that just leave it unpredictable because unpredictability will give you a better story than you controlling your other fighter and telling you the person who's controlling the fire the fighter yo don't finish him yet let's go with a different thing or setting up cues if you're gonna set up cues to do all this extra shit what makes you better 
than the than the real fake thing absolutely nothing because the real fake thing is scripted you get me and now yeah. player versus player is scripted so what is the point of even watching or playing a player versus player thing when it's scripted you get me yeah the only reason That's why i talk. watch like i was like watching a player versus player fed not fire pro online but like it was another one like a 2k one yeah i'm just like like it, it was interesting at first but especially since 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 like it's a 2k game and like you're playing online the um um, what should we call it? The camera doesn't stay on the um match; like it follows the character. So that turns hmm, me off. So I'm just like, bruh, whatever. Unless I it's a one-on-one -on -one match, now. it's something. But like, if it's like a multi-man match, the camera doesn't stay; it just moves around because it follows the follows that person. Of so, course. So it's like, and you know what? Yeah. I would have thought that 2K by now, after making how many damn WWE games, they made like almost like 40 of them at this point in their lives. You know, they would have figured out the formula. You know, I know they had help with another developer helping them out in the game engine and doing whatever the case may be. It's cool, but you got to have a contingency plan in place. You know, if something doesn't, um, if you're not learning from the person next to you, if you're not learning, like realistically learning, um, you're not going to evolve. You you got me? You're not going to become better because you're still stagnant. You got me? I'm working with, with 2K and we're making WWE and whatever, and I'm not learning how to render characters. I'm not learning how to make arenas. I'm not learning how to do the basic sprites for the game then what did I waste all my time working for you for, you know, all that time, you know, you got to learn from the person next to you. You got me. We all students of the game. People feel like they're the masters of the game. Like even the masters of the games are still students of the game in, in life. You got me? Because you're always learning how to evolve from the next man. You got me? If it's anybody, you know? Yeah. And like, when it I just I was gonna buy 2K only just to join some other e feds, but after seeing the mess that's going on and the patch update that still breaks the game, I'm like, yeah, this is ridiculous. But I'm just gonna stick to Fire Pro. <laughs> yeah, that's actually the better bet, and I feel sorry for the people who um bought. Uh, 2k and wasted you know 60 hard-earned dollars on 2k because you know graphically 2k looks great you get me yeah. like i can only imagine um doing what i do with wrestling cup classic in 2k you get me like Dude, i love I doing the arena textures in, in fire pro it is fun you got me i uh, shout out to all the creators who do on texture modding shout out to the modders and whatnot uh, for Fire Pro for keeping the game fresh and unique, but imagine if I was to do this on 2K and 2K was a stable game, you, you know, like the 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 is endless possibilities would be the better uh, assumption because the creativity level will, will skyrocket, especially if I can use and build original arenas. Oh, forget about it, you know, you know. So I understand why people spend the money because graphically it looks nice. But if the game is broken, you know, it sucks that 2K doesn't pay attention to their fan base. I mean, it's not just with WWE. It's also happening to the NBA series. It's also going to happen to whatever other franchises they own because 2K is a huge company and they own Rockstar. They own um, the, the, the 2K brand themselves, Take-Two Interactive. They own a whole bunch of other small companies that make triple a games so you know they have to listen to their fan base to be like hey this is not working we need to fix it especially for 60 bucks man 60 bucks is a it's not easy to come by yeah like the only people i do not feel sorry for for buying the game is new legacy inc because they just breaks the game regardless <laughs> so it's like they have their money's worth <laughs> Yeah, shout out to those guys. Those guys are great content creators. Those guys have fun 
they they know how to they know how to like uh, entertain the the audience with with just the banter alone. So and, and I love that. That's actually pretty cool. It's really unique. And um, yeah. yeah, so shout out to them <laughs> for always breaking the game. Right, like. Like if you want to know how bad the game is, just watch them. They they like they will tell you that like, they won't tell you. They're just gonna show you. They're just gonna yeah. break it, and that's the funny thing about it. But but like some things when it comes down to federations, like back to the efeds. I feel as though every efed has a certain goal and and wants a certain thing, like mm-hmm. there like the certain outcomes. Like what is of your course. outcome or goal with this um fed? Um, and so with this federation, with the Wrestling Cup Classic, my goal is to bridge the gap that um, exists in the Fire Pro world with um, having two different versions. Um, you have a very strong dedication um, from the PlayStation 4 community who spent hours and hours creating fighter for the um, creating fighters creating um characters and stories for these guys and the same and the same thing goes for the pc but the pc i feel like has a stronger community so my goal at the end is to bridge the gap between the places before community and the pc community um by taking edits that were exclusive to the ps4 and showcasing them on the pc with the mods and the cameras and all this other stuff you know give the creators joy you got me get get them motivated like hey i seen my fighter on wrestling cup classic tv and the game looks completely different than my ps4 you know someone took time uh to appreciate my character someone took time in scouting someone took time in uh getting to know my guy you know and that means a lot as a creator um i joined the tournament many moons ago as a creator right and that gave me so much joy um, waiting for my character to fight and um, seeing him on the stream, even though it was a losing effort, but seeing him on, on someone else's stream and, you know, feeling that um, uneasiness and proudness at the same time, uneasy because you don't know what the outcome is going to, you know, but proud because your character is being displayed in a tournament. Um that is showcased around the world. You get me? Because yeah. people on Twitch and YouTube watch this stuff from around the world. Yeah. And like, um, was it a critical clubs t- tournament or something? It was a PWR tournament, pro wrestling revolution tournament. And it was fun. It was, it was ran by the guys, uh, who do, um, figure four leg lock, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it, it was a cool experience, you know, just to be oh. a part of that. Oh, I know you what you're talking about now. Yeah, and it was so fun. It was just very, very fun to be a part of that tournament and have my character there because I took a lot of time. I just bought the game on PC for the first time. I just created my first fighter, and his logic was kind of whack, and his moves was dope, but the logic was pretty whack. Um, and just... Having the joy of seeing my character there was, was you know, m- made it worthwhile at the end of the day. It made it worthwhile as a creator that I was like, oh, shit, like my guy's there. Um, and I love that feeling. And I want to create that feeling with the PC and PS4 guys. And then, you know, we're doing that now, you know, in Wrestling Cup Classic. Uh, I have a PS4 league that I run called elevate wcc elevate developmental um the reason it's called elevate is because you're elevating from ps4 to the pc which is considered the main roster and the big boys because you have so many great creators there like avenger you have senator philip you have um princess pepperoni officer brightly you have you know all of these great guys and gals who um make great characters you know, and they're all original. And you're like, holy shit, like these original characters can kick ass and they're entertaining. Um, so Elevate is a platform for PlayStation 4 creators to submit their characters, see them evolve because Elevate has a strong roster. So the creators on Elevate will push you to your limit to continuously update your character, put new moves, give them a new look. 
do this and do that. And that's exciting because it can, it makes the game more relevant. You know, it's not like a one and done. Yeah. It's like, I wanted to do something like that, like make a developmental territory, but at the same time, it's like, if I want to make a developmental territory, then all my, then like all the scrappy wrestlers going to be there. But at the same time, it's like, a developmental territory can possibly, this is only possibly, like, for example, NXT, it could dominate and be better than your main show, than your flagship show. And, like, yep. what I, like, what I did is, like, I started, like, um, three different wrestling feds, like, currently. I started three different wrestling feds. My main show, okay. which is NAW my developmental territory slash my show that, I, that I'm going to test all my new stuff on, which is PSPW, and then my extreme show, just for the whatever, just because I got other wrestlers that I get that stuck in my head, XCW. Oh, and basically, nice. like, um, and it's, and it's like, if you're going to do something like that, you got to get your schedule together. Yep. Which is very hard. Yeah. <laughs> Because dedication is the key, especially when it comes to running a developmental brand. Television, uh, um, motivation and dedication is the key. Um, doing Elevate, for example, um, it took a lot because I had to manually scout out who I wanted to be in the main event scene. For example, um, Chris Pierce, he's a great uh, wrestler that started on the PS4 and now he's on the PC. I ported him up. Another great character is Mr. Fantastic. Another great character that came from Elevate, Toro Bravo, Owen Tracy, Zach Roper. Um, Zach Roper, for example, came from Elevate and did such a great job on Elevate, winning some matches, getting his name known and cutting promos on the Discord that it was a no-brainer for him to be a part of the PC community because he was so engaging. Um, he was such a great talent and discovered by Wrestling Cup Classic that he ended up uh, being a part of as well, Fire Pro Online. And um, it's all about talent because I took time out of my life to, to, to scout these guys, you know, spending countless of hours on firepro.net looking for original characters, looking for guys with low downloads to give them light, looking for people um, that want exposure versus people that need exposure. You get me? There's two yeah. difference, you know, there's two difference there, you know, um, and you have to know the difference when doing a developmental. It's like it's scouting at the end of the day, you know, you're not going to win the World Series. You're not going to win the FIFA World Cup. You're not going to win the Super Bowl if or the NHL hockey tournament, if you don't do scouting. Scouting is the key to any promotion being great. I have, I've had times where the Elevate stream that streams on Wednesday nights, Elevate puts on the better card for the entire week. And it's because of the matchups. And that's great because it showcased that the brand is strong from every level. You get me? Yeah. Even from the bottom in Elevate, you coming in as a rookie in Elevate. You get me? And that brand is so strong, right, that it could compete on the level of the other two brands. I had creators from Elevate champion the idea of Elevate being a mainstay between the, between the other two brands. And I'm like, it already is. You get me? The reason you're part of the brand is because you are a part of the entire experience, you know? Yeah, your character makes Elevate stand out, and that's perfect because that gives other creators um, more encouragement to want to be a part of Elevate, you get me? And makes them want to be a part of the PS4 community and continue thriving that community, you know, especially in the wintertime. Right now we're in wintertime in the East Coast. People are right now going to start downloading 2K because basketball season. They're going to download the NHL because of hockey season. And now it leaves the wrestling market in shambles because it's like 
I'm not going to go 2K because I don't understand it. You get me? I'm not going to go Fire Pro because it looks too, t- too 2D. You get me? Yeah. So it yeah. leaves the wrestling fans right now in shambles. So right now, if any player picks up one of the two games, you get me? And by hearing that 2K sucks, by the fault, they're going to pick up Fire Pro and try it. You get me? And see what the fuck is the hype about. You get me? Why do people talk about great about Fire Pro? So it's going to open up new players to join Elevate and be a part of the developmental brand. You get me? Because the PC community, like I said, is stacked. The PC community has such great original characters um, that is ridiculous. You get me? Like... (laughs) Everyone has an original character on PC, you know. The Steam community is on fire. That shit is stacked, you know. That's like that's like the New England Patriots. They're stacked, you know. And the PS4 community is such an untapped market because, like I said, so many great fighters. Like we have fighters in Wrestling Cup Classic that you haven't seen on other streams. You get me? That are good fighters, and you're like, I haven't seen this fighter before, you know. And that's all breaks down to scouting yeah like the thing is like scouting is good it's good to get like more people on your roster because you know it just it makes you more dynamic roster with so many different personalities and like one thing that does like kind of hurt is that like like let's be honest some people only watch that show but not your show just like shows in general just to see their character which is kind of that's true which is yeah like but like some people watch that show just to watch that show like to watch just to see what to see everything of course don't get me wrong i've gotten people who've done their homework off of wrestling cup classic stream you got me yeah um because i've seen what what Fire Pro is. You get me? And I understand it. And I understand to put on an exciting product, you got to find exciting wrestlers to feature. Yeah. You, know? you just can't have uh, Vanilla Joe versus Vanilla Joe and expect um, a great match from two Vanilla Joes. You get me? I'm not saying that is not possible, but, you know, the, the, the chances of that is very low, you know? So having people who spend time creating these characters and making them very unique, you know, and showcasing them, it, it's nice to see and whatnot. Um, now, you can get lost in the shuffle. That is a possibility on any federation. You can get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. And, like, like just for example, CWF, they got endless people on their roster and people okay. do get lost in like in the whole thing because the fuck <laughs> because <laughs> sorry like I'm just looking at my TV because I put um kind of put your show on your on my TV and I'm just like is that bad news Jafar? <laughs> ah bad news Jafar he is a good fighter He's a great that a fighter. fighter. That's all he is. Yeah. He's a great fighter and he has a great stable in the bad news stable, right? Yeah. Uh I love the I love the stable. You know, the whole three man team. Um, shout out to Qatar to, to Qatar because Qatar is the shit. So shout out to them. They're hosting a World Cup. Um, so seeing his three fighters and grabbing those three fighters and putting them a part of my six man division. Um, not only does it give it more credibility, but it gives me now a creator from another country watching, paying attention to his fighters, to his storyline, and talking shit to the Discord to make it much more spicy would be the better word, and giving his character more of more of uh, developmental pieces and more structure to the character because you know a lot of people don't take time to realize that, yeah, you create your fighter and give him a story, but the story must continue. You get me? It's like if I give you a Marvel movie and I'm like, here's Ant-Man and the Wasp, now to defeat the the bad guy in the first five minutes, we have two hours of screen time to fill. You get me? What is it? What's Scott Lang going to do? You get me? What is the Wasp going to do? Are they going to tweet with thumbs for two hours? Are they going to play fucking Uno for two hours? You know? Um, So having a guy like that like bad news Jafar B 
be a part of Wrestling Cup Classic is nice because he gives a lot of dynamic, you know, his team, you know, with the kick-ass music coming out to the ring, them being brawlers and getting nasty in the ring. That makes for really good commentary, you know, because you can portray them as the bad guys. And if they're playing other bad guys, you could portray them as the good guys in this situation. And again, that falls down to the unpredictability and how well you know the game. And he's a creator that understands the game and the creation process of creating a really good trio stable of wrestlers yeah and like making other and like making stables it's fun but you got but if you want to put them in like a certain show or something like that they got to have a certain goal because like not all stables gonna just wants to rule the company some yep. stable just want to collect gold some stable yep. just there because they're like mercenaries yep which I wish I wish I really want to try to make, but like a mercenary uh, stable. Yeah, like like they like that like for like for example, they brought in to the company just to, because well they got that yeah, they brought into the company by the booker just to do whatever they want. Well, just for the yeah like their end goal is to collect money. Yeah, you know. Why not? I mean, that's the name of the game, you know. If you yeah. if you if you're in it for money, and that's an end goal of yours, you know. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it, you know, for marketing purposes, for merchandise purposes. You, I mean, if that's your end. If that's your end goal for your trio, you know, you can make it a reality for your trio. Is it going to be difficult to make stuff for that as a reality? Absolutely. But those are the obstacles that come if that's your end goal. You know, if I make, um, for example, Wrestling Cup Classic. I want to take this logo and put it on T-shirts. That costs money, but that's my end goal because I want T-shirts. You get me? And I want that to be a thing and I want people to wear it. But if if only that's your end goal, you know, like you aim towards that. So if you if money is what's going to drive you, by all means, make a team that's hot, make a team that's marketable, make a team that, hell, any promoter, any booker, anyone that's a part of the Fed situation and seeing sees it, it's like boom, instant money. I can print money with these guys because they have a thing, and no one else has that. Um, and and that's cool, you know, because everyone has their own motivation. If money, if if money is yours, by all means, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. if you have a marketable product and is and is marketable, and your team is marketable. By all means, shoot shoot for the stars. You got I me. Mean, no one's gonna stop you on that. Yeah, and um, and like um, one question that I that I did put on my notes, even though we never, even though I never really used my notes for real, is okay. like, are you part of Critical Club? Like, are you I'm, part of them? I'm not a part of. I'm not a part of Critical Club. Um, I I've been. By, my, by myself realistically besides um the creators submitting the wrestler um but i do everything mostly independent or uh, in-house by myself so i haven't been a part of critical club i've seen um some threads on critical club when i was first starting out like uh the belt's texture for instance i, I found a critical club and that's how i found avenger and i was like that's pretty dope um but as being a part of a member of them no um would I like to be a part of a uh, critical club's crew? Uh, sure. Why not? Because they are a fire pro leader. Um, so that would be really nice. Um, yeah, I don't really know much of, uh, of the critical club guys besides just browsing their forum to keep it real. Um, but yeah, if any of the critical guys is listening and you guys want to work with uh, wrestling cup classic, by all means, I'm game. Um, I'm open to it. Um, I won't say no to that, to, to that and whatnot, but yeah, um, I'm always open to work with new people and, um, and just continue expanding. Cause that's the name of the game is yeah. to expand. Yeah. And like, even though I'll be honest with you, when I started being like independent, it didn't really give me anything. But like actually being part of like some groups, 
it does help you expand and it does like make you learn more about what you're doing and like everything which is pretty cool especially with using mod packs by carzilla yep. it's like his mods be cool and like same with other people who mix mods yep. like yep you see is is people like carzilla is the reason why wrestling cup classic even exists you know yeah. um some people hear this and gonna be like, "Oh, look, he's just kissing ass and whatnot." And it's not like kissing ass or anything. Is really appreciation because even you said it. You got me. It's just appreciation to someone who took their time to code the game, a group of them to be exact, to test the game, another batch of group that gets the pa the patches before anyone else's, and they test out the patches and reports any bugs. So. Just on that alone, building that kind of a community and expanding the lifespan of Fire Pro so anybody can come in there and get that awesome experience, you know, even though it takes like 20 minutes to mod it, 30 minutes, maybe an hour or a day, you know, depending on your skill level, um, which is not that hard to mod anyways, um, but it gives you more life. It gives you more opportunity. There's Inferno matches because of mods. There's changing the cages because of the mods. There's, um, what, what's another cool one that they have there besides the camera and the arena texture? Oh, the modding of the world is pretty fun. That's pretty dope if you're into controlling your roster. Carlzilla has a mod that allows you to manage your whole roster. Who debuts? Who retires? Who's... Who who's injured? Who's this? Who has the belts? What belts? When they won the Royal Rumble thing is cool too. You got I me mean, like the vanilla game only comes with eight standard in the Royal Rumble because of Carl and everyone who worked on those mod packs. We can run sixty man battle royals. You got me eighty man battle royals. And it's like um, if you think about it. The reason why Fire Pros keep patching up, having new things that's kind of similar to the mods, is because of the modders. The modders, of course, is the reason why Fire Pro is like like patching up, getting some new exclusive things. Like, like, like if it wasn't for the modders, we never have like the um entrance craft. We never yep. would have that. Yeah, so, I totally agree. Yeah, so like I think. In the years to come, we might have everything from the mods be like start coming from Fire Pro. Itself, of course, which would be I dope. Mean, and 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 that's what happens when you shine so bright. You shine so bright that other people have to notice you. You get me? Like that's the power that you possess in you. You shine so bright that others around you peep you. You get me? I may not peep you, right? You may not have been in my radar. Like, I'm going to peep you. But now, because of how you move and how you flow is so strong, I have to peep you now. Now I got to watch you. Now I got to pay attention to you. Damn. You took my game, right? As a developer, you took my game and you enhancing that experience. Your homie, what are you doing? You get me? Like, what are you really doing, my dude? You get me? Like, that's how it really breaks down. And because you shine so brightly, you know, you get noticed. And that's with anything. You get me? Look at look at all those other past um, streamers that I mentioned before. What made them so good is because they do something different that makes them shine. Yo, I shine. I shine so bright, homie. You gotta peep me. You get me. I'm I'm brighter than the sun, homie. And like, besides your fed, what other feds do you like watch? Uh, on on streams. Like like it could be on streams. It could be on YouTube. Like anything. Uh, I I peeped my boy. He has um IPCW. It's called Badoken Two K. Um. He's pretty cool. I watch his stuff. Um, I watch the Herrings stuff. Uh, low streamer, PS4 kind of guy, no mic. Um, features a lot of original edits. Really cool. 
Uh, I do watch Spoochula. I do watch Spoochula. I do watch um, the HTW shows and whatnot, even though we have a quote-unquote beef and quote-unquote rivalry. Um, I do watch the HTW stuff just to just to look at what John is up to and keep, in, keep tabs. Um, I also watch anyone pretty much that just streams in the 5 Pro section on Twitch. I would, like, always tap on see see what they do different um learn from um my opponents would be the better word learn from my opponents again that comes down to the scouting um you learn from your opponents so this way you can see what they're doing you got me and what makes them a little bit better so this way you can adapt to your content to make your content stand out a bit more not copy not be like okay i'm a cut copy paste you know because a lot of people do that <clears throat> fbo um but you you know you watch something you like okay this is cool i like it um i see what they did there how can i do something better or something more unique than what they're offering to the table you know like commentary on the streams is important you got me that's one important factor for any streamer you got me especially if you're doing fire pro it gets it gets repetitive when it becomes when it's silent, it becomes very repetitive. You got me, you're gonna get bored. You got me having someone to come up with original um wording and shit like that. For example, like our past commentator used uh he when a girl grabs another girl in the hoo-ha, he she grabs her in the hoo-ha, folks. Like that's original. You got me, it's funny because you're gonna laugh. Um, when we do the timer, for instance, we use the fake minutes. You got me 50 fake minutes has gone on the clock, folks. And that's something that you get me. I, I'm only, ge- I'm only working with what the game gives me. You get me like, I'm only working with what the game gives me. So the game's giving me 50 fake minutes. I'm going to count it out. You know, fuck it. It is what it is. Um, the game gives me glitches. Fuck it. It's a part of the show. The game gives me, um, the game gives you a lot of things, but making the commentary unique, it gives you a better experience across the board. If you have more people joking on the stream with you, it makes it unique. If people are commenting on the on your stream, that makes it unique. Um, and all of that interactive stuff matters because a lot of people want to engage with everything. You get me? People want to engage. You get me? People get intimidated when they see um, other streamers um there and they're not engaging you get me like they don't want to engage but if they see people engaging they see you talking not necessarily might have to see you but just hear you talking engaging with the community guess what they're gonna want to engage you got me um people see the people with cameras and they get intimidated like oh man uh he has a camera now i, I don't know if i can stream and be better than him with a camera you know you are you you get me you're gonna shine no matter what you get me if you're you, people are going to like you. You get me? Don't be afraid. You get me? Once you are afraid, you're going to put yourself in a box where you're not going to get out. And streaming Fire Pro, you want to get out of a box. You got me? You want to be noticed. You got me? Because it's such a unique game that you want to be noticed. This is a, a very niche market, would be the better word to say, because is so niche only diehard fans of fire pro put on new players to fire pro you get me it's not like a universal game like mario kart that your grandmother picks up mario kart your your little sister picks up mario kart your mother plays my you get me this is not that you got me yeah and so th- oh my bad no no go ahead like what like what i was about to say is that fire pro so to you it's like it's, it's like a cult community. So like yep. only people who knows about the game, people it's like look like they got some new players in the game. Yep. And when they see and when they see what we're doing, they just wanna be a part of the community. Yeah. Look, like I have a guy who was watching the stream the other day, um, and loved the tournament stuff. Loved it so much. Um, not only did he follow the stream, he became a member on Discord. Um started chatting up with me um had a really good conversation and now he submitted a wrestler to elevate 
uh, submitted a wrestler with logic and moves and this and that just to be a part of it. You get me? Because of the unpredictability of it. You get me? It's not him controlling his guy. It's the computer guy doing what the computer guy does best. And that's a testament to the product because it's so entertaining and engaging, you know, that other people want to come and be a part of that. And that's amazing. You get me? When I first started this, I didn't think that it can be where it's at. I didn't see it. You get me? Like, like I said, it was just for fun. It still is for fun. You get me? But having it grow and see other people be a part of it and talk about it, share with it on their social media and talk to their friends about it and so on and so forth. That, you know, that's, that, that, that's power. And that's amazing. I'm like, what showed me the power of making something so entertaining and so engaging that other people want to be a part of a movement. And I appreciate everybody who has been a part of this journey from the commentators, which is uh, Jeff Sunday. I also watch Jeff Sunday, um, Jeff Sunday, our commentator, to Gun Hill Bain, who lives um, uptown in Trap City. So it's fun, you know, for these guys, because Gun Hill Bain loves the game. He loves, he has fire pro for the PS4. He loves the game. Um, he loves pro wrestling. So for him coming here and seeing these fictional edits, it's like being a part of the real fake thing, you know, and still enjoying it as a newcomer like for him seeing prince Shu, for example kick ass zach roper kick ass having a banter with zach roper seeing mr fantastic seeing a owen tracy seeing a cletus mason seeing a mount fuji seeing the golden boys seeing um king jaguar seeing all of these character bravo for instance seeing all of these original edits to him is fascinating because in real life when we watch for example even you ma uh when you watch aew and you saw santana and her t show up that got you excited right got you mad hype right you're like yo look at this you got me yeah you know and and, and you're a fan from that's conditioned from a while so having that excitement matters a lot and these creators provide that you know they provide that excitement that other people who had no intentions of playing with CAWs and diving into the world, want to play with CAW and dive into the world. That's a testament of how, sh how bright it shines. Yeah. I, I really love me some original fans, like, like with original characters, original storytelling and just people being unique. And like, you can have inspiration from the real stuff, but, as long as you like original and just have fun with it and not like being dead about it, then yep. you, then you'll be fine. And like when it comes to these big feds from the Fire Pro community, it's like it's like I feel like like this is just my opinion, but the we are the indie shows, and yep. then the Critical Club shows like the big top shows like like okay. like their WWE is CWF, their New Japan is probably Zip Japan, and then you got all these other shows. Zip versus... Japan, credit to that guy for taking an original promotion of Fire Pro. That's like yeah. an original Fire Pro promotion and giving it light. And that's so fucking amazing. That is cool. That he gave it light. You get me? He took a defunct promotion from Fire Pro. That a lot of people don't know about took a defunct promotion from in the game and gave it light. That's so beautiful. That is so like that is cool. And like I just want to see like the the small shows like us just rise up. Yeah, that takes time though to rise up from from where we're at to be like um like um twitch partners and affiliate like um that takes time to be the alpha of the indie promotions will be you know to say the, to say what it is it's hard work because 
you have a lot of people who are competing for eyeballs who are competing to get that um that title you know um but it just takes a lot of work and dedication and putting out something that's different you get me because yeah. critical club you can have um great cards in critical club you can have great cards um in zip japan you can have great cards everywhere you know but eventually you know you need to replenish that talent pool you get me or else it becomes stale you know and if you don't have newer fighters being represented there then you're going to fall back into the indie category from your alpha promotion status because you're going to move down you know so you want to keep that as up as possible because you want everyone to keep continue associating you as the top dog, but that only comes with scouting. You got me looking at the other guys, seeing what the other guys bring, what smaller talent I can bring from one of these promotions to spice up my roster, you know, and that takes time and whatnot. So we'll get there, you know, don't get me wrong. Um, People watch all of our streams, you know, even if it's low viewer counts, high viewer counts, people watch it to see what you have that they don't have. What can they implement that you're doing that they don't have? If it's, you, you know, and, and that's with anything, even WWE does it, AEW does it, AAA does it, New Japan does it, um, Stardom does it. All Japan, Noah, continue. You can name them. You can name all of them, and they all do it. You can get me. What do you think? Yeah. WWE wasn't gonna be where it's at if it didn't go and search out other talent from around the world. You think they'll still be in the same boat? No, <laughs> they did it because they needed to, because they understood the market. You got me. The market is elevating. You got me. Hence why I call it elevate because you're elevating it. You get what I mean? Like, you can stand still or you can elevate and move up. Elevate and add new stars to it. Spice up the roster. You get what I mean? And, and give the fans, the viewers, something new to look forward for. Like, in Elevate, we had a bunch of great rivalries that made people tune in. We had Chris Pierce, Mr. Fantastic. People tuned in. You get what I mean? We had Chris... Pierce going up against Toro Bravo when Toro Bravo was on an undefeated winning streak. He went to 9-0 and on Elevate. You got me? People tuned in every week to see if he would lose. You got me? Because he was facing great fighters. You got me? The story could be told with your role players, but once your role players get tired and the viewership is going to get tired of seeing the same role players chasing after them, you got to switch it up. You got me? You always got to switch it up. And the best way to do it is, is to look at the indie guys. You know? Oh, snap. He got a character. Let me get this character in here. See if this character can go up against my guy. Now, in my big show, Critical Club, WrestleMania. Let's see if he can do a Critical Club, WrestleMania. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's that real shit. It's going to make me tune in because it's a guy that I have investment time into. You got me? Yeah. And, like, um... Sometimes, like, we all want to do something different. Like, everybody want to do something very different. Like, some people want to start doing dirt sheets. Some people want to start doing, like, fancy graphics, and which is cool. Yeah. And people yeah. just want to be different. Like, instead of just having feds, role play, promos, people will want to do something, like, a little bit differently. People want to, like, add some spice into their food. Yep. Speaking of another guy that I like to watch, and speaking of dirt sheets, I love that guy, C C A W F Fi. That's my guy right there. I love that dude, Fi River Fighting, and he has that big voice. All right, now we're here. I love that. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, yeah. this is so exciting, yo. It's, it's like I watched that show a lot, and like, and like the only show I would not watch again is Revolution Two because that job was so fucking long <laughs> long how long was it it's like three hours and wow. like hold on let me see if you can pull it up it's like but that was like tying up all of his loose ends like yeah. all of his storylines and blah it was blah tying blah up all so. his storylines but the thing is it was one match that turned into like four different matches 
His little cruiserweight right, conquest that joint. That joint was. <laughs> I was so mad when he did that, because it, it's. I would love to do something with him. It's like I thought the conquest was going to be like a battle royal, but no. Yeah. It's basically, eight re- eight. It's basically like four matches of eight wrestlers, pinfall. First pinfall wins. That's crazy. That's unique. It's unique, but it's, to me, it's stupid because it's so like long. <laughs> because, Very long. Like all matches usually be like around twenty minutes or some yeah. shit. And if it was a better like if it was a Royal Rumble, that'd be awesome. Simple, yeah. possible. That's it. No. Yeah, that guy's good though. He's good. He's really good. Like, I want to do. Him. I want to do a super. I want to do a a super card with that guy one day. Like I want to do like a WCC, X C A W F. Uh, if he ever listens to this C D C A W F, uh, head Booker, or as Brian Pullman calls it, Booker Man. Um, <laughs> let's do something, Booker Man. Uh, I'm open to work with you and do a super card. Maybe uh, R O V. You know, maybe R O V versus Elevate. Uh, you know. Because he just recently just started his own uh, developmental league called ROV. So I would love to have his developmental stars go up against my developmental stars in a battle of, you know, developmental stars. See who has the better farm system. Yeah. And, like, one thing that does got me caught me off guard with him, my show's on the Thursdays. Well, okay. my main show's on the Thursday. His new show that's coming up, it's also on a Thursday. <laughs> oh, like, my show's on a Thursday too, so we have competition on Thursdays now. Welcome to World War Three. <laughs> That's it, yo. <laughs> the Thursday night wars the is Thursday officially starting. Oh my god. But <laughs> folks, place your bets. It's gonna be a Thursday night war. It's gonna be a three way dance here. But but the only time difference is that mine's is three o'clock PM. His okay. is eight. Yours probably okay. around eight o'clock, right? Like eight thirty. Like eight thirty. So y'all to go at it while I'm just sitting here laughing my ass off. Like, haha, look at these That's fools. Right. <laughs> you already got in your ratings in for the day then. So then uh yeah, you, yeah, you can sit back and, and watch the, the sit other two back guys. And watch y'all two motherfuckers just start just start throwing shade at each other. <laughs> hey, you know <laughs> it's the name of the game, man. I'm gonna start tuning in and giving out his and you see folks and C A W F maybe attention if i do it eric bischoff maybe that would get his attention he'll be like you know what screw it we're gonna do it live we're gonna do vince versus eric bischoff in the ring <laughs> a match that we never gotten in the 90s we'll do it live um yeah but it's gonna be cwf uh rov on thursdays or cwf news show on thursday their um uh, new show is unlimited Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's what they call it. They call it Unlimited, and that's the new show. So, it's like, okay. oh, boy. Then they already got the graphics up, but I'm just nice. like, they got their commentators ready, and I think he nice. does tapings, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. know he has, like, a, a, a thing that he has, like, a system in place and whatnot, and most of his stuff is pre-recorded, which is super nice. I really like that. I... I really like his content. Like his content is really creative to the world intro. C A W F worldwide leader since 2018. I'm like, that's fucking dope. I really like that. <laughs> and then he has like the cool intro. Dun, 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 dun. And you see the wrestlers in the building and shit. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, that's how you gotta fucking do it. And then he comes in with the pyro boom 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 with the fight. I'm like, perfect. I'm like, you know, like as a new fire pro fan watching that you're like whoa like, <laughs> like whoa that's, that's a, and then like the average Some joe boy friends, shit. and like then you got us be like that's a little too much but at the same time that's cool <laughs> yeah you know but i i appreciate the showmanship going above and beyond because you know it, it you want to captivate the audience you want to grab them and grab their attention and get them hype and do all this extra stuff, which is nice. You know, that just shows that he cares for Fire Pro and he yeah. cares for the community. And in and, and, and that kind of passion, you it's hard to replicate because um no one can match your drive but you, you know, and that's real. You got me? As much as 
you know, you watch CWA stuff and you want to do your CWFI voice, guess what? <laughs> You're not going to nail it. You get me? Because you don't have his unique style of how he says fi. You don't have that. You don't have his unique approach to it. You don't got that. You get me? You can try it. You will get exhausted. You get mad tired trying it. You get me? Because you're chasing the point leader and you're like, let me chase the point leader, but you'll get tired and whatnot because eventually his passion is going to outshine you. You get me? Like, you're going to realize, like, damn, you know, I got to make all these intros, cut the, put it in, do this, make a promo for this guy, do this, do the intro, get ready. By the time you're ready to shoot, you're already mentally so fucking out of it. You're like, damn, I don't, you get me? Is it even worth it? But for a guy like him, the guy who runs CAWF, that's not work for him. You get me? That's his passion. So for him, it's like, oh, what? Let me do an intro. Click, 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 click. Done. You got me? Boom. Shoot it. You got me? I'm here. Fight. And you're like, whoa. And you can feel the intensity. And that's dope. You got me? That is fucking dope. It is dope. And like the only the only company that I know or fed that I know that does that, they're a 2K fed. And they call FAM, Forever Movement. Ooh, nice. They, like, they, I think they kind of stopped making shows, but they, on the hiatus thing, I don't know what happened to okay. them, but they does stuff beyond, which is yeah. freaking amazing. And their shows be long as hell. They don't got no weekly no, but shows. but it's worth it. It's worth it. Like, they don't got no weekly shows, but they does, like, monthly or bi-monthly big events. Yeah. And they just, oh my God. Yeah, you they, see, they you, you get me. It has you crazy. tuning in. You're tuning in. You get me. Like you're watching it. Yeah, and you know. So imagine your excitement if you're a 2K player and you're watching that. What do you want your CAW on that stream? You get me. Like why not? You get me. Like of course. These guys are showing care, dedication, and passion, not only to the business. That is the esport business but they're showing passion and dedication by specifically targeting pro wrestling you get me specifically targeting 2k you got me and that's the passion you get me they're just passionate about what they do and that is beautiful that is one of the most beautiful things passion you can't you can't outbeat passion yeah so you really can't outbeat it it's just, ah. it's always there and for people to make stuff that's like beyond just what the game can handle is fucking amazing. It's like I always wanted to try that, but it's gonna take a lot of not yeah. just time, but it's gonna take money spent on taking out the watermarks of any videos and all that stuff and just yep. more editing tools and stuff. Yep. Cause cause I know he used Sony Vegas, so Oh. Yeah. Nice. Vegas is you, you get me? Yeah. Like, you, you, you nailed it on the head. It does take money, right? It does take money to set up these equipment. Um, <clears throat> my apologies there. That's cool. Um, when I was first doing Wrestling Cup Classic, like I said, I started on the PS4. And the PS4 was cool, limited to a lot of action, but it was cool. Um, I didn't realistically get into the pc community until my nephew um gave me his hand-me-down gaming computer so i i on the real world um i'm a jack of all trades but i do have my it certification you get me so mm -hmm. i'm skilled in it stuff i can build my own computer and stuff like that so i built him his first gaming computer and it was super cool very fun um and he built a new one. We built a brand new one and whatnot. We spent almost like 1700 I think 1800 on the new one. Boom. And his old one was just going to sit there. So I decided to take it and put Fire Pro. So this way I can learn how to, you know, do what I do now. Um, and then that computer broke. And then once it broke, yeah, that computer went to shit. <laughs> and then I started working um, and saving up my money. And then from saving my money, 
I decided, you know what? I'm going to go into streaming. I might as well go into the Augusto. I might as well go for it all. Um, and then I spent a total of $2,800, I would say. About $2,800 with, I got Blue Yeti mics. I have a super powerful gaming computer that has like 11 gig video RAM. So I got 64 gigs of RAM on my machine. I have an i7 processor. I got like a shit ton of terabytes of hard drives. I have a good camera. I have a good green screen. Um, I built a studio, you got me? Because I wanted to go in it 100%. You got me? Like, I, I said to myself, I want to be a streamer. This is what I want from my life. Um, I'm going to dedicate myself to that. Um, and I'm happy I did because I got I got Photoshop, After Effect, Lightroom. I have um, Premiere. I have all the Adobe suites that I paid for. I have a whole bunch of great apps that I paid for. Um, that's, that will help me eventually. Cause now, now, now that I'm here at this level, I can only, what I need to do is elevate myself. You get me It's come up with more original ideas, more things that haven't been done in the fire pro world, more thing that the real thing has done that I can incorporate here to prolong the life of fire pro, not just a wrestling cup classic, but to fire pro overall. Um, we're on television now on, uh, New York City. We're in New York City MNN. We're in public access. So we're on public access. We're going to start shooting that show in December. So now we're on television. That's 2 million people that get to see your original CAW on air. You know, um, 2 million people that never got to see your character before will now have the opportunity to see your character. You get me? Because public access is big. A lot of people watch it. Um, I'm also working on a deal with LG so I could be featured on their smart TV. You got me like those IP TV channels that people get in their smart TV. Um, I'm trying to be, have a channel on that for wrestling cup classic. So now it opens up to 40 million people watching your original character, not just, you know, stone cold, the rock and real edits that they can really watch on Mondays and Fridays and Wednesdays on, um, uh, dynamite you get me so this opens up the platform for new people you get me and that's thinking outside the box you got me because other fire pro creators they just thinking youtube and what they're thinking twitch and mixer you get me that's it you know i'm thinking putting it in front of real people you got me putting it in television putting it on those smart tvs putting them in bars putting them in a movie theater you got me have real people watch your real original character not a player versus player character now okay we have little jimmy controlling mike and little jimmy controlling mike b and little jimmy playing jimmy yay go no it's i don't know who's gonna win it's like a fucking boxing match it's like a soccer match it's like a fucking baseball basketball match you don't know if lebron james is gonna go and dunk the ball and break his fucking wrist you don't know that you get me you don't in his real life, you don't. You got me. If only you do know that, then let me know. We got a time machine, a DeLorean. We can go back to 1985, pick up a sports ormanac, and we could be rich together. You feel me? That's real shit. You get me? So if you're in the movie theater, you're watching it. You don't know who's going to win. It's exciting. You hear the commentary. You're like, wow. You got me? Boom. It's going to sell itself. So, you know, it opens up the platform to that. And those are the future steps of Wrestling Cup Classic. That's going to be a thing by 2020. You know, people can get second commentators. You can do all of that. But the the well of streaming, which is the YouTubes and the and the Twitches and the Mixer, you know, is going to dry up because people are only tuning in for specific games on those things like Fortnite, Call of Duty, Madden. Um, what else they tune in for? Uh, illegal movies. <laughs> you get me? Right. You get lost in the shuffle. You get me? So you got to reinvent the wheel. And we're reinventing it by putting it on television and having real people, you know, watch it. You get me? We're shooting a commercial for Wrestling Cup Classic. We have uh, clothing sponsors like Privilege, PVLGNYC.com. Um, they are Privilege. New York is the current sponsor of the best of, best of Super Juniors International Tournament. 
you know they're that's a real clothing brand it's not a fictional clothing brand it's a real new york city streetwear clothing brand you get me not only are they in new york but they're in japan they're in hong kong they're in freaking uh europe they're everywhere you get me so that's the name of the game is putting real people behind the product that is going to invest into your fighter you get me so it's very important to make a fighter give them a strong story role play a little bit on the discord because massive amount of people are eventually going to look at all of this and be like holy shit you get me this is better than the real fake thing it's wrestling cup classic you get me by the way by the way that's copywritten so <laughs> oh, shit. just throwing that out there man's ready for everything yo i mean you gotta be uh, again when you invest time and your energy towards it um you got to go for the Augusto. You know, you got to go for the Augusto. You got me? You got to. You got me? You, you're having fun with it and whatnot. And if your idea is original, it's going to gather a lot of attention. And people are going to look at it and be like, yo, I want to be a part of that. Like, being a part of privilege um, and having access to a lot of musical artists, for example. Like Fabio, the new kid who came out with that song, bang. Bang, bang, bang with the crib shit. Like, you suck my lip dick. Like, that dude is dead ass. Like, that young dude, he rocks the privileged clothing wear. You got me? He's hot in New York right now. You got me? Like, gang shit is hot right now in New York shit. You know? Um, not only him, but big pun son, Chris Rivers. I've worked with Chris Rivers. I've worked with the ASAP mob. Um, I've worked with core mega from the 90s i worked with laser laser major laser for example um after on cool ass parties with these people um great djs kid capri and all these great guys um so privilege provides the like the the artists and the platform because we're going to start shooting at their studio as well and they offer great clothing they offer amazing streetwear clothing at the end of the day which is super cool they have a cowboy bebop like t-shirt collection that they dropped that was super fucking fire um super fire um yeah and we're proud that they're our sponsor you know and and getting more sponsors that are gonna invest not only money energy and time into the product but invest into your character because if they like your character guess what they'll make a t-shirt from your character you get me and it goes back to what we were talking about earlier about goal if your goal is money you know you have a great team or great wrestler male female or question mark you get me because people nowadays 2019 you know you got to add the other gender um so let's say if you have anybody you know and they marketable and they have a good logo, good name, good this, and it's all original, you know, sponsors might pick it up, make a t-shirt from it, you know, and now you're making revenue on it, you know? What other Fire Pro stream you could realistically say, like, yo, my guy has a chance, I have a chance now to make a little bit of bread if they really fuck with it, you know? Like, hey, I mean, to be honest, it's not a bad thing making money off of what you're doing. And, like, some people might say, oh, this is a sellout. He's selling himself out. I'm like, dude, it's not selling himself out. It's making money and trying to do something, turn something yeah. that you love and turn it, something, and turn it into, like, a job or something like that. Yeah. So for example, I mean, like, it's like, hell, Ninja. You got Ninja. He he streams Fortnite and all that stuff. And he makes money off of it. Yep. So it's nothing wrong with that. And no. plus, plus, what I was going to do is set up a Patreon for like all the stuff I'm doing and all that stuff. So plus, because not only I'm in school, but I need to make some bread, so I don't have to worry about like living off of school payment. Yeah, that shit will get you. Yeah, that school payment shit will get you. It, the, you know, the system is designed to get you. So, if you don't find another mean of income for sure, you know, relying on that 
will get you caught up. So going back to the Patreon thing, and when then that's a really good, unique way for people who mess with your content and love your content, you know, like if they really fuck with you, you know, they will put up a couple of dollars, you know, like, oh yeah, you know what? I like mom. Mom is cool. I love these podcasts. I want him to be better at it and succeed. I'm going to give him a support of a dollar, one dollar a month. You times that by like 50 people, you know, it's 50 bucks. Yeah. You know, like you didn't have a month ago. You didn't have a day ago. You didn't have two minutes ago. And those 50 bucks works towards your living to continue making great products. You got me great interviews, finding great people to be a part of the show, to, to do all of that. Um, it's the same thing with Netflix. You got me. You don't complain when you pay for your Netflix and your Netflix is like a million dollars. You got me. You don't complain. You're like, fuck it. I want to get my Netflix fix. You pay for it. Hulu, Disney plus, um, whoever you can mean like you support your product, no matter what it is, you know, the value, the value of having that product in your life, whatever may be description, if it's, um, a streaming subscription, if it's a car, no, a house, the value of that outweighs the price. You get me? Like yeah. you're hungry. You're going to buy Chinese food. Your Chinese food costs 10 bucks. You know what? You only got $20. You got me to your name for the week, but you want that Chinese food? Guess what? The Chinese food outweighs the price. You're going to pay the 10 bucks. You're going to keep 10 bucks in your pocket. You're going to have your meal and be satisfied because the value of eating what you want outweighs the price of what it costs. And that is relevant to anything, to anything and whatnot. So if people complain like, oh man, you know, $4.99 is too much. Are you, do you do the same thing when your kids want Netflix? Oh, I want my Netflix, daddy. Well, you know, fourteen ninety nine is too much, Papo. You're not getting Netflix today. You get me? Like, are you really gonna you, you break it down to yourself? You know, I'm not gonna buy Death Stranding because it costs sixty bucks, but I really want it and whatnot. You get me? But you have it. You get me? Is are you really gonna let that determine your factor? No. You get me? You're not. If you really want Death Stranding, you're gonna buy it. If you really want the Twitch subscription for four ninety nine, you're gonna get it. You got me? You're going to support it. You know, I want to give you a buck, Ma, because you do great. I'm going to give you the buck. You got me? Because I fuck with your product and I believe in you as a creator, you know, and, and that shows testament to who really fucks with your product, who really gives a shit about you as a creator, you know, and, and that's power and that's dope, you know, and, and that's awesome when people shell out, you know, to help out others. So when value, you know, exceeds price, people give you money. That's a good saying. Um, and I repeat it again, but value exceeds price, no matter what the value is, if the value exceeds the price, you know, people give you money and whatnot. I get more bang for the buck. Take the $5 It's yours. Cause I know for that five bucks, I have access to not only see this week's content, I have access to see last week's content, two months ago's content, 60 fucking 90 days ago content. And not only with just one content creator, but you have access to all of the content creators. You get me? You follow somebody, you like them. Now you have a subscription. You can watch all of their stuff. You get me? And that's the benefit of it. And that's amazing. Yeah. The benefits of doing something you love to get a little cash. Yeah. It's I not, mean, it's not even about the cash, really, at really the end not. of the day. It's, it, it, it really helps put the show together. Like, um, because people think, oh, man, your subscription base or anyone's a, a subscription base. Oh man, they pocket the five bucks. Little did they know you have to reach a certain quota before they even give you the five bucks. You got me? Like, let's keep it real. You got me? And the quota is set so fucking high that if you're not a ninja kind of guy, you're never going to see that money. You got me? And that's real talk, you know? So 
you can support it because you love it. You get me? You want to see the person win. You want to see your character win. You want to just keep in contact with your character. It's cool. It's worth it. You get me? Um, but you got to. You got to just support what you believe in, even if it's a few dollars, a few cents, you got me? You support it. And that helps content creators go a long way because there's so many people that have so many unique situations that still put on a great product week in, month in, out, you know, because they're so dedicated to what they do, you know, and a little bit of extra little chump change never hurts. You got me? It never hurts, especially if you're, producing a lot of stuff and you're spending money on equipment that never hurts because your fans will appreciate that you're using what they're contributing to a good cause you know what i'm gonna attribute you 60 bucks this bought this guy needed 60 dollars more to get that microphone now he has the 120 he's gonna get a good mic next time i tune in boom he should have that new mic Boom. Now he has the new mic. Now I feel, you know, in control of the promotion because I contributed something that went to a good cause. You get me? That helped the other person become better. And that right there is dope. Yeah. Just people helping each other out is the best thing all the time, making each other better and all that stuff. It's fucking fantastic, yeah. mate. Yeah, this has been a fun interview. Yeah, we already in like, yeah. in, well, we're already like an hour and thirty six minutes in, so that's something. I did not. I thought this about to be a two hour interview. <laughs> long <laughs> as your show, well, that'd be fucking funny as shit. That's it. As long as the Wrestling Cup Classic stream, check it out. It's the interview of all interview, folks. You do not want to miss it. And if you have missed it so far, rewind, catch up on the great stuff that was said because there's a lot of good gems that you can unpack. You got me? I mean, like, you know what? Right. But, but one thing I kind of want to figure out is that, like, Since your game is modded, and when the next mod pack c- comes out, I wonder what that's gonna have inside, because we have because we already just got entrance craft, which I'm which I'm gonna get tomorrow. Okay. Thank fucking God. For nice. God bless the school for paying me just that's to be it. on time. <laughs> the educational system, folks. The educational system is the best thing ever. Sometimes it's, it's, it's retarded, but depends where you live. Hey, it is what it is. Free money, baby. Apply to your local school, folks. They give out free money. You get an education and free dinero that you won't have to pay back until you are old. But don't worry about that. Just get the free money now. Oh, yeah. I forgot. You do got to pay that <laughs> shit back. <laughs> yeah, you definitely got to pay it back, man. They're going to come for you. They're going to be like, listen, what's our money, bucko? They're gonna come send. They're gonna send Dano to come book you. They're gonna Dano book him. Dano get him. They're gonna get you. Better pay that money, ball. <laughs> oh boy, this will be fun. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I waited for the for the mod pack to be released. I was offline for a little bit because I was so free. I don't want to lose none of the mod. You get me? And I love the mod, um, especially the camera mod. I love I don't want to lose none of that um, unique feeling that we use on a weekly basis just because the game, because I was a thirst buck. So I was so thirst to give, to give up 20 of my dollars to go get the new pieces that um, it's not really worth it to keep it real. Um, instead, of, instead of paying 20 bucks, it should have been like 10 bucks, you know, like max. Um, really the new arenas be. are cool. Huh? It really should have been like at least like, Yep. 10 or 15 or yep. some shit but yeah like 10 bucks because the the belt parts they're cool but it's if you have the mod pack and you're part of the modding community um critical clubs text files you get me they, they're there they exist and they are way better than the one that you get for 20 bucks you get I mean, like the stock 20 dollar jump off like is not 
worth it at all because um yeah it, it, it just looks terrible it looks cheap it looks cheap it's like one belt edit part right that's universal that you can customize any color which is okay and then you get the the outline which is like the stock belts like the replica wcw heavyweight belt the replica nwa belt the replica wwe belt the replica whatever you know like the stock ones that you can make but now you can put them around the waist so now once you put them around the waist you got to make a separate costume attire for them and then uh you can use that with the entrance mod craft and you can have your guy have a long entrance um, I can see people turning off the entrances because it's too fucking long. I can also see people utilizing it and making some great entrances. Like the guys in the mod pack did the Shockmaster entrance. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see that. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. Um, so you could do fun stuff with it. Change the lighting and the camera zooming and stuff. That looks cool. The big arena, uh, yeah, the big, uh, big garden as it's called now, with the with the fancy lights on the sides and whatnot, looks cool when you use the camera mods, um, and you put it to like facing the arena, like um, ringside view to face the arena. Um, you get to see all the like the bright colors still, and you get to see the the logo that says Fire Pro Wrestling World. So I can't wait to see when people, um, other modders remove the text and they put like their own specific branding on it i can't wait for that because that's going to be extremely fun because it makes now the product all products become unique especially fire pro vanilla game makes it much more unique um it looks cool the big garden arena um the other arena which is like the outdoors arena with the tree and shit like if you're using the camera mod oh forget about it you have to get a specific preset made for that venue because if the camera mod is behind the tree you're gonna be literally behind the fucking tree you know so oh god that yeah so reminds me of the new arena man that, man that reminds me of 2k when you make your arena and then you start doing highlights and then this big ass structures in the freaking way i'm like oh my god yep yep that's the exact same thing that happens here and then the new gym arena is nice. I like the gym arena a lot. Um, I do too. I love I love gym arenas. Yeah, the, the, those are, those are my favorite ones. Like Elevate is on a gym arena, so Elevate might have the new arena as their new arena, the old current gym as their like takeover gym, and then the big garden as CS and all those other ones for like their super card kind of thing. Um, because you know, now we have new options. Yeah, we do get new but options. But it, it's not worth it for ten. It's not worth it for twenty bucks, though. I might just get it just to get the just to just to be updated, so my joint doesn't get corrupted again. Yeah, that's another thing with the mods. If you're not updated on like all levels on the mod and adding, um, yeah, you know the specific the extra things. Yeah, it's gonna crack. Which are experienced that like three times, two, oh, two man. of them times they erase all my data. I have to restart all my fades, and they're just like, God damn. Oh, that's the worst part. That's the worst part. But that's what you get for messing with the mods at the end of the day. It's, you know, you risk that opportunity. You know that that that's a gamble, and you risk it. It is a gamble, which sucks ass. You gotta risk it to get the biscuit, there, buddy. Right. <laughs> Well, any yeah. last questions, Paul? Any last questions? Let me check. Uh, my notes. I hate my notes. You gotta check the notes, baby. Basically, we already asked a lot. We already asked everything, basically. All like, right. Like, um, <clears throat> what was I gonna say? Inside your fed, you, you like you have divisions, yep. singles. Don't you got like women's? Yep, we have a uh, so the divisions break down is um, main roster heavyweights. Then we have the five pounds of gold uh, junior heavyweight division. We have the twenty pounds of gold tag team division. We also have the WCC women's division, 
which is shared by both of the main roster brand. That's um. Then we also have the Big Gold Championship, which is exclusive to Trap Down. We have the Thirty Pounds of Gold Six Man Tag Team Championships, which is also on Trap Down. Uh, we have the Television Championship, which is also on Trap Down. Jesus fucking um, Christ, everything's on Trap Down. <laughs> I mean, Trap Down. You know, the difference between the show is that Monday nights you get death matches. On Monday nights you get regular tag team. On Monday nights, uh, the juniors on Monday night. And you get some heavyweight action. And then Thursday, uniqueness is that you get a six-man tag team. You have the television division, which is stacked. You get the uh, the women, the women, the the whole their women division. Uh, and you get big match heavyweights. You know, so the tag team is really where it's at. You know, it's like, do you like regular tag team? You know, you watch Monday nights if you want six-man tag. You tune in on Thursday night. And then Elevate only has three championships, which is the heavyweight, the tag team, and the women's and whatnot. Uh, you know, more time, you know, it gives the creators more, and Elevate specifically, it gives the creators more um, and of an opportunity to, to stand out. You get me? Because the division is now shorter. So you got to make an exciting fighter by default so this way you want to stand out on elevate you know you're like okay i want to i want to watch elevate because of my guys here and the division is shorter here so he has to stand out to get recognized to make it to the main roster once you're in the main roster because there's so many belts in the main roster you can get lost in the shuffle quick i won't i'm not gonna lie you get lost in shuffle real quick um but you have got to stand out on the main roster, but I believe in you, you got to stand out. You got I me mean? like, I'll give you matches so you can stand out. And after the, uh, do you feel your quota of matches and you still haven't stand the MU? You make your adjustments. I, I ice you. I put you back in the mix. See if you can stand out again. If you fail to do it a second time, I ice you, you rework. You got me? So there is a lot of um, upside to be a part of the main roster because it keeps you on your toes. You got me that you can submit a wrestler and keep it moving. Yeah, that's dope. But don't be surprised. Don't complain when your guy's losing every week. You know, oh man, my guy's in wrestling cup classic and he loses. Yeah, no shit. Sure. Like dummy, because <laughs> you're not updating your guy. You got me You're doing logical moves. You're not giving him new moves. You're, you got me like, you're not paying attention. So don't complain to me yeah. when he's losing, you know, like do be a better, you know, do your job. You're, you're a creator, right? Do you take pride in it? Do your job. Create. Make them better. It's like, when it comes to my feds, if you want to submit a rest on my fed, you can. And, like, I would try my best to make him credible. Because, cause like, there have been a lot of underground talent. And, basically, I support the underground talent. Yeah. I want the underground to, like, rise up to become the best. And plus, if you un plus unused talent could come on my show, and they'll be like one of the best. You could like, like, yeah. on, like for example, I'm not shooting on say on on say on CAWF because they are a good company, but JKL, right? He, okay. Like, ever since Kano and JKL was broken up from a tag team, Kano got hurt. JKL stuck in mid card purgatory, and he ain't doing shit anymore. So he got hurt. And now I'm building them up to be credible. Like Kano, he was national champion. He was in CR Fire Pro for a while. And like now he's just being himself. Yeah. And Jack Kale. And now he's open to new he's open now to new opportunities. You know yeah. what I mean? To 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 see better competition outside of the bubble of being in a tag team. Yeah. And and now his story is going to continue growing. You know, that's the most beautiful part is that his story is going to continue growing and people are going to witness the progression of him. You got me? A part of the tag team stuff. Yeah. And with Jake Hill, what I'm about to do, I ain't spoiling anything from my tapings, but Jake Hill, he's going to be a fucking madman. Like, not like crazy mm -hmm. madman. Kano's already that. But he's going to be like, let's just say something like a Kenny Omega mixed with Prince Debit. He's going to be something like very, very deadly. Nice. A deadly combination between two good wrestlers. Yeah. 
Just try to nah. make them credible. You know, and that's going to make him stand out is how deadly he's going to be in the ring. You get me? How he's going to be deadly in yeah. outside of the ring is going to make people want to tune in and watch his progression because they're going to be invested in the fighter. They're going to be like, you know what? I saw him as a tag team. Him and his partner broke up. They have two different paths, you know, and it gives people now two different fighters that are going to move around reasons to cheer for them. You get me? Because if they see them on your stuff and get excited, they see them on another stream. Now they get excited. It's like, wow, this guy's a journey, man. This guy's doing his thing. And, and that's dope to see the progression of characters. Yeah, everybody want to see people out like other than where they use where they basically was. They want to see them like some like be different, be something instead of being what they just was told to be. Yeah, that is true. That 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 is very much true. Well, this podcast has been long enough. It's it's already one fifty, so. Oh man, we <laughs> killed the time here. Yeah, so like, um, thank you to you, Ma, for giving me the opportunity to be a part of your podcast. Thank you so much, um, cool. for inviting me as a guest and sitting me down and and having this great conversation and having your viewers, uh, now know a little bit more of me and wrestling like a cup classic as the brand. Um, I just want to say thank you to you once again, and if you guys want to tune in and follow. Uh, you can follow Wrestling Cup Classic on our Instagram, which is at Wrestling Cup Classic, our Facebook at Wrestling Cup Classic, our YouTube at Wrestling Cup Classic, Twitch at Wrestling Cup Classic, Mixer as well at Wrestling Cup Classic. Um, yeah, I hope we see you guys in our stream um, in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed um, this sit down and whatnot. And once again, thank you to for Point of View and Mall for sitting me down and having me as a special guest on this beautiful day. Well, you're welcome, mate. So I'm at the end of this podcast and, and basically I'm just thanking WCC for like even coming on and all that. And like, if you want to see more of this stuff, hit the comic session below. Tell me who you want to see, or if you want to be on this podcast, just let me know. We can schedule like a day. And hopefully I'm free and you're free at the same time. So, yeah. I just want to say thank you everybody for tuning in and ciao.